Greetings, greetings, family. Uncle Job, Suneb, life, prosperity, and health to each and every one of you. I trust and pray that Ra finds you and your family in excellent health and spirit. I am your host for today's uh, worship service, uh, Baba Malik, and I'd like to extend a greetings to each and every one of you. Um, before we get started, I would like to first uh, acknowledge our production team, the people who work behind the scenes and make everything that we're able to do on Wolf Say the Zoom possible. Without them, we would not be able to uh, have our worship service on Zoom. So I'd just like to give a shout out to Baba Ty, Baba Bill, and uh, Minister Imhotep. So let's give them a black hand for the work that they do for, uh, for us every single uh, Sunday and Wednesdays uh, and Tuesdays, as a matter of fact. Um, Baba Damu, could you lift up the community in song? Baba Damu, could you lift up the community in song, brother? Do yes, good morning, Wu Good morning, good morning. Uh, good morning. God bless you, each and every one. I'm so thankful to be here and it's an honor indeed and a privilege and everything to be able to play for you this morning. I thank God for making it possible for me to uh, play for you. I am going through some extraordinary changes here recently, but God is good. God is performing miracles all over the place. So I want to uh, play this song that I wrote, uh, I think probably around 1984. When uh, uh, and then the this song was first sang by a sister Ola Remy and and brother uh, Ed Kane, who was known as Kepra. Uh, the song is called Blessings. <laughs> Things of a father. 
is from the frozen land. Just set our people free, praise all of let it be. Oh, hail rising sun, when victory is won. For the light of truth we pray, to guide and lead our way. People of the sun, unite and be at home. Fight for righteousness and peace, to death you cannot see. Oh, hell, rise and sun, when victory is won. For the light of truth we pray, to guide and lead our way. The message from the now, the vision of a child. The pyramids told our story and our truth. All hell rise and sun when victory is won. For the light of truth we pray. To God lead our way, to God lead our way, to God lead our way. I say, give him a black hand, we'll say. The maestro, that's the maestro there. We have to give Baba Damu the maestro. So beautiful, so powerful, so needed at this time. Um, Song is always needed. You know, the libation was so powerful. The circle prayer was so powerful. We're going to return to our minister, our, our very own minister, Alicia, and her beautiful children are going to come forth and lead us in the community uh, affirmation. Come forth, minister Alicia and children. And as Minister Alicia gets ready for the community affirmation, uh, we'll be followed by our uh, distinguished scholar, uh, uh, warrior, uh, poetress, uh, uh, Sister, uh, 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 Sister Rana. God's truth to be and self-determined. Creator, help us to remember the humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and to honor the struggles of our elders. Let us, let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let us be knowing, sharing, and creative. Let us work, study, and listen so we may learn, teach, and cultivate self-reliance. Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect our hearts and homeland. We will, we will raise our children according to the needs of our nation. We will discipline patient, patient. I'm not sure we're having technical difficulties with Minister Alicia and her children reading the community affirmation. Um, so I'm not sure where they left off actually, but- uh, I could do the rest of it. Um, they left off uh, with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction of our people. We are an African people. We are children uh, of God. Children of God. Beautiful. Let's, let's acknowledge Minister Alicia and her, and her children. We have to always acknowledge our children when they come forward and uh, display the, 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 the love and investment that has been placed in them. So they will remain encouraged to come forth and to do these things. So we thank you, Minister Alicia and your beautiful children. And uh, 
beautiful, beautiful job. Um, next, uh, without further ado, is our very own sister Rana. And this is a, a, a special treat um, for the Wolsey community. Uh, sister Rana is going to uh, uh, read a poem for, uh, for us. Come forth, Sister Rana. Uncle Justin. Uncle Justin. So I just want to start out by saying that as many of us are, we're going through growth and change modes right now. Amin Ra has stirred the entire desert floor and we are all in the midst of it and we'll see where it settles. But with the topic of today being reparations and that was my focus in this poem, um, I thought about um, my way of thinking that's transitioning from not just identifying problems, but identifying solutions, right? Because very often we are quick to identify the problem, but don't also have in tow a solution for that particular problem. Um, so what I'm gonna offer to you today is a poem, but then I'm gonna follow that poem with what might be considered a temporary solution in the way of a mantra. And um, this mantra was actually um, exposed to me by Sister Latrice, who I don't think is on today, but I still wanna mention that. Uh, she exposed this to me several months ago um, on Facebook and it just stuck with me. Um, and just to give a little bit on mantras, mantras are uh, often musical, mathematically structured, uh, spiritual interpretation or have spiritual interpretation and are considered sacred utterances uh, in many different religions. Um, some people, um, look at issues like reparations as so big that as an individual, there's nothing that you can do to, to take that on or nothing that you can do to contribute to that. But as my Baba Hale would say, in the meantime and in between time, there are things you can do that at minimum affect yourself and your household until perhaps you're able to do things then on a bigger picture. So um, with that in mind, I want to offer you a poem, and then I want to offer to you a mantra, okay? So I'm gonna do the first thing first, and then I'm gonna do the other thing after that. So just remember that there's two parts to this, and hang with me. So this poem is called, Pay Me. For all the work that I've done and still work working to the bone and living, excuse me. For all the work that I've done and still living on the run to actually feel relief that I never bore a son, pay me. For the stupid grin you walk around with like there's not a care in the world. I noticed it for the first time when I was just a girl. I had no notions of supremacy or even Jim Crow. I only knew there was something different in your life, something me and mine didn't know. Pay me. For enough never being enough, for crab bucket mentality, for the haves and the have nots and a no Ubuntu mentality. Pay me. For needing to fight so hard, I pop a spring, split my wig, drown in a bathtub like Sister Whitney did. Pay me. For having to deal with me, while I deal with him, dealing with himself while dealing with me, pay me. For one day looking at you and having the audacity to say, maybe you are the answer, maybe you are the way. Oh, heck no, pay me. For all the times you called me Shira, for all the times you said I was a queen and a for all of the great great grandmothers where you took what she didn't mean for you, mm. pay me. I see. With uh, interest. For making me work my fingers to the bone, for it being 10 at night before I get home, for not being able to retire till 60, 70 years long, pay me. Go back to Africa? Yes, I would love to. But even my return passage is owed to me by you. Pay me. Thank you. Ashe. Ashe. Oh. Yes, yes, give her, give her. Two brothers and sisters. 
Hang with me just one more moment. Something for in the meantime and in between time, Baba Hale. I know you're out there. And some of you may have heard this. If you have, do it with me. Ching, ching, ching goes the money tree. And every time it ching, money comes to me. It all flows in so abundantly from the top, left, right, and up under me. Wave, 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 I'm a money wave. Money made, money made, money saved. Flowing in and out plus money saved. Debt, 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 all debt is paid. Ching, ching, ching goes the money tree. And every time a chain money comes to me, it all flows in so abundantly from the top, left, right, and up under me. Wave, 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 I'm a money wave. Money flow, money flow, money made. Flowing in and out plus money saved. Debt, 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 all debt is paid. Ching, ching, ching goes the money tree. And every time it ching money comes to me, it all flows in so abundantly from the top, left, right, and up under me. Wave, 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 I'm a money wave. Money flows, money flows, and money's made. Flowing in and out plus money saved. Debt, 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 all debt is paid. Ashe, thank you. Ashe, let's give her a black hand. Sister Rana throwing down the poetry. Now, we'll say, where else can you get such a respected group of talented people? We've had beautiful songs, we've had, we've had libations, we've had poetry, music. We just getting started, we'll say. We just getting started. Uh, I'd like to call uh, forth our, wait, be before I go forward, it's always important when we get together uh, on this format to acknowledge you know, our ministers, those who are doing work behind the scenes. They don't just come to Zoom to, uh, 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 you know, to, to spread the word of my, it's a living embodiment of the, their lives. So I just would like to just acknowledge the, the ministers of, of Wolf Say, you know, Minister Imhotep, you know, uh, just, uh, well, you know, he knows everything. He, he really does. And I don't say that sarcastically. That, that man is so <laughs> knowledgeable. Every time he speaks, I learn like 3,500 different things. Minister Michaelisi, a minister, the minister of my art, a minister with a song in his heart, and he's going to grace us with a song uh, later on. Minister Amadi Hines, we pray that your family, your daughter, and your wife are doing well, as well as your, your, yourself. Uh, Minister Molly, I don't see Minister Molly on here, but we still want to acknowledge him. And, and, and last, but certainly, certainly not least, Minister Alicia. Minister Alicia. And, and, and Baba Sidney. Bible Sydney is an MIT. We'll have to tell you what that is later on. But let's just acknowledge the, the ministers of, of, of the Wose community. Let's give them a black hand, Wose. Give them a black hand. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ashe, Ashe. Uh, now coming forth. Uh, doing excuse what you excuse me. Excuse me, Brother Malik. I just uh, want to, <clears throat> that poem uh, had such an effect on people. And I don't know if Sister Rana had noticed in the chat, uh, people are, are requesting copies of that poem. So uh, just want to put it out there. If you're able to put your poetry in the chat or maybe send it to some people later, you can. All right, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, you might want to put uh, that famous quote she made when people are requesting the poetry, pay me as a fundraiser, as a fundraiser for Eli Day. That's all I'm saying. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I digress. I'd like to call forward our distinguished uh, 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 brother, uh, Baba Jeff. You know, he's the one who starts off our services uh, with, you know, beautiful uh, videos of the Wose, uh, 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 Stones of Fire, and, and other musical uh, uh, talent that he displays. So, Baba Jeff is going to bless us with today's historical tribute. Come forth, Baba Jeff. Yes, sir. I'm a Ryan Tep, was a family? Uncle Johnson then. Ashe. Let's get started. I'm a Ryan Tep, was a family? Again, it is my honor to give the historical tribute today. 
The historical tribute is our continuing effort as a community. We're not seeing the video, Jeff, if there's a video. Uh oh, oh I forgot something. Place where we've been in our history. Our commitment as a community is to keep alive in our hearts and minds at least seven generations of our story and be reminded that our ancestors made great and meaningful contributions when they stayed connected to spirit and that we must. That if we did great things once before, we can do great things again. Thanks, Bob. Following the end of the American Civil War in 1865, a group of the newly freed black people, African people, met with Union General William Tecumseh Sherman and Secretary of War Edwin Stanton regarding their challenges going forward. They were asked a simple question, what do you need to support yourselves and your families? A Baptist minister named Garrison Frazier spoke on behalf of the gathered clergy of their unanimous and firm response, land. The response to the clergy's request was General Sherman's Special Field Orders No. 15, issued on January 16, 1865, which pronounced that each family shall have a plot of not more than 40 acres of tillable ground to supply South Carolina and Georgia, as well as plantation areas 30 miles inland stretching from Charleston to Jacksonville. The order granted to each newly freed adult male claimant a 40-acre tract. In March of 1865, the Freedmen's Bureau Act repeated the promise, and by June of 1865, 40,000 of the newly freed had settled on the coastal land. President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. In just over a month from President Lincoln's death, on May 29, 1865, the new president, Andrew Johnson, issued an amnesty proclamation pardoning the rebels and restoring their land to them. Two steps forward and 40 acres back, the newly freed. And so, the practice of promises made, promises compromised, if not rescinded, became a fixture in the lives of the newly freed and we, their progeny. It is in the wake of the broken promise of 40 acres that the story of the honored ancestor of today's historical tribute, Callie House, begins. In the late 1890s, a new promise reached the ears of Callie House, a modest widow, a mother of five, who worked as a washerwoman, doing the laundry for white people for a meager wage, knowing it was deeply insufficient to meet the needs of herself and her children, as well as her people, the newly freed, 30 years removed from their bondage in chattel slavery, but now languishing in a new form of bondage, a perpetual source of cheap, hard, back-breaking labor. So, this modest woman of extremely modest means would invest some of her precious earnings, together with others in her community, to purchase a pamphlet sold by traveling former newspaper publisher Walter R. Vaughn. What would move those of modest, even meager means, along with others, to buy a pamphlet? A promise for a better life. Callie House Born in Tennessee in 1861, had the benefit of a primary school education, allowing her to read the pamphlet sold by Vaughn, commonly for one dollar, which explained that a pension bill, based on the pensions of Union soldiers, was crafted for ex-slaves, the brainchild of Vaughn, and introduced as legislation by Vaughn's friend, Nebraska Congressman William J. Connell. The bill called for providing a pension of $15 per month and a bounty of $500 for each ex-slave 70 years old or older. Those under 70 would receive a $300 bounty 
and $12 per month until they reached the age of 70 when it would increase to $15. Those under 60 would receive a $100 bounty and $8 a month until they reached the age of 60. Those less than 50 would receive $4 a month and at age 50, $8 a month. Under the law, the primary requirement was that a claimant had been enslaved. As you might imagine, Tally House, literate, with life experience through Reconstruction and its ending, knowing the terror that black people, African people endured, and she, a widow with five children, surrounded by white hostility, but having to go forth each day in spite of the danger each day posed, she was like the others around her, interested in the promise the pamphlet announced, but wary of a white man from Selma, Alabama, claiming concern for the tattered condition of freed people. It would, however, soon become clear what his real motivations were, improving the economy of the South by having ex-slaves spend their regular pension money on goods and services offered by white-owned Southern businesses. So, while having genuine concerns about Vaughn, Callie House was nevertheless intrigued by the possibilities of an ex-slave pension bill contained in the pamphlet. She and cohorts then set out to learn everything they could about how Vaughn went about having a bill introduced to Congress. Vaughn explained the process of seeking out congressmen to introduce and sponsor bills, the lobby effort to push the bill through, and the petitions from citizens to show how the bill was helpful to their lives. After learning, discussion, and planning amongst her cohorts, Callie House would co-found the National Ex-Slave Mutual Relief, Bounty, and Pension Association with a black school teacher and minister named Isaiah Dickerson, who formerly worked for Vaughn as one of his traveling agents. In 1898, the first convention of the association took place at Gay Street Christian Church in Nashville over four days from November 28th to December 1st. Callie House would become a tireless worker for the association whose charter was not only to turn ex-slave pension from a bill to a law, but also to provide as a mutual assistance to the mostly poor and elderly by providing money to those suffering from illness and injury to the families needing to bury deceased association members. Her prolific work would eventually get the attention of the state and local governments and then the federal government. The government began tracking the association to learn what such a large group of black people all across the country was doing in the meetings that had been reported to them. To their surprise and consternation, nothing dangerous or criminal, but a growing enthusiasm for receiving ex-slave pensions. But as the history of all activism associated with black people, African people in America, from Cali House to the Civil Rights era to the Black Panther, Black Power, Black Liberation era, the government was hell-bent on putting a stop to grassroots movements involving black masses. After initially going after Isaiah Dickerson, who was first convicted of mail fraud and then having his conviction overturned due to the lack of evidence, the government set its sights on the face and beating heart of the movement, Cali House. The association made efforts to cooperate with the government, but it soon learned the government was not interested in helping the association operate legally. It was interested in stopping its mission altogether, even when it was clear that the association was sincere in its efforts. To destroy the association, they chose the main communication channel to the members around the country, the U.S. Postal Service. Unable to reach out to members and send and receive funds by mail, Cali House was forced to travel by train all over the country to keep work of the association alive and substantive. From 1901 to 1915, she and the association endured setback after setback until eventually, Callie House was arrested and convicted of fraud in which she was advocating for ex-slave pensions, knowing they would never become law and therefore was engaging in fraud by continuing to do the work of the association. But prior to her conviction, Callie engineered a lawsuit against the U.S. government by demanding, you guessed it, reparations for slavery. The suit was based on cotton that had been sequestered by the federal government during the Civil War. When Callie House and the association learned about this, Callie wanted to invigorate the organization and members across the country with the lawsuit, which it succeeded in doing, but would prove to be the last straw for her personally. The 
the suit was thrown out for the very reason that has continued to vex supporters. You cannot sue the U.S. government unless the government gives you permission to do so. Go figure. After serving a year in Missouri State Prison, Callie House returned to her home in Nashville. Unfortunately, with her being absent, the association came to an end. On June 6, 1928, Callie House died at age 67. Callie House, Ma'at Keru, true of voice, Ashe, Ashe, Asheo. Ashe, brother Jeff. Absolutely beautiful and powerful, Bobby Jeff. That that yeah. was that was Fantastic outstanding presentation. Fantastic, absolutely. You know, every time we'll say someone given a historical tribute, you know, I personally learned something that I did not know before. And I wanna just thank Bobby Jeff for sharing that with us. I mean, your voice sounds like you are corresponding on PBS or CNN or somewhere. And when you mix knowledge, so, so profound knowledge and jazz, it's amazing. And I wonder if you would do us the honor, Bobby Jeff, by offering uh, a libation to Cali House. I should. Uh, give me a second. Cali House. Cali House. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. I'm going to be with us. Thank you, Baba Jeff, mm -hmm. so much for that. And now we'll say community. It is my distinct pleasure and honor and privilege to introduce in song, our minister, but a master and well, actually a PhD in my eye and always has a song in his heart that lifts up this community. Minister, minister Michaelisi, will you do us the honor of blessing us, blessing this community with a song? I see, I see. I mean, right here, Tep, we'll see. It's always good to be. I see, good to be in your company, in your presence, in your spirit. Uh, Across the miles and around the earth, I'm in Ra Hetep. Give thanks and praises for the presentations thus far, for uh, that beautiful, informative, inspiring historical tribute, the music, for the poems, for everything thus far. Uh, and bear with me. Bear with me. I'm in Ra. I'm in Ra for divine control of my thoughts and actions. I'm in Ra, I come to be for deeper devotion for the mission you have given. I'm in Ra. I come to thee for greater self-knowledge of the real in the unreal in me. I'm in rock, I come to thee. I'm in rock, I come to thee. For truth and justice, balance and harmony for righteousness right order and reciprocity i'm in rob i come to thee for imani kuji chabuliya umoja ujima ujama for me, Kumba, I'm in Rob, 
I come to thee. Amen, Ra, I come to thee. For sep, tep, be power every day, every hour. I'm in Ra, I come to thee. In that spirit, let us rise up as a people and be free. I'm in Ra, I come to thee. I'm in Ra. I'm in Ra, we come to thee. Amen. Ra, your spirit in our hearts sets us free. Every day, every hour, through the tepi, septepi power, let us rise up and be totally free. With septepi power every day, every hour, let us rise up and be truly free. Amen, Ra, we come to thee. Amen, Ra, we come to Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Brother Minister. Brother Minister, so beautiful as always, gifting the, the community with your voice, with your songs, always inspirational. Thank yes. you so much for that song. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I would like to I would like to introduce what I think is the epitome of Black love, of Black power and spirit, a comedic power couple. I mean, you know, Barack and Michelle don't have anything over these two. Oh, you too much, man. <laughs> Sydney and, and your queen, Connie, will you come forth and lead our community in the litany of sacrifice? I say, thank you, thank you, brother. But look like I say, boy, you give an introduction uh, outside, you know, it's just beyond comprehension. I mean, you, you, you definitely know how to how to hold us up, brother. We appreciate you. And uh, welcome again, uh, uh, community. And before we start, as we talk about reparation, just the whole uh, uh, flow of this uh, uh, of service, we understand that, um, that, that it takes a little bit more than just uh, talking about it. You know, we saw the sister, uh, 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 Callie House, how she was the, the, the mail service stops sending the mail. This whole thing about number 45 trying to change the mail service around and stop the vote, it didn't start, you know, last year. Right, right. This is something that go, we go back, we go back a hundred years. This has been they scam. This has been have to put a couple of dollars, have to put in a couple of dollars, have to do some work. We have to contribute. We talked about Booker T. Washington and how the neighborhood came out and they gave what they could and uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, how the community came together and gave what they could. And this is the time in the service where we asked you to, to do that. You do your part. We don't have a, a tithes uh, laid out where we say that you have to give a specific percentage of your money. We talk about, as they used to say in the in Ghana, when I first went there, just get whatever in your heart. Come on, and now. that's such a real statement. Whatever's in your heart. Yes. You got a hundred dollars. That's in your heart. Give that. If you got one dollar, if that's in your heart, give that. The Most High will take it in. The community will take it in because we know we are people of the way, and the heart is that is that cornerstone organ. You know, it's the intellectual part of it. It's 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 how we work how we move as a people is where where it is so give what's ever in your heart and so we're going to start with the litany of uh, of sacrifice uh brother bill man, i tell you and we have the address up here for you to read i just want to make a side note as we call folk out but brother bill you are the you are the intellectual genius bro you put some stuff there as we go you 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 come up with stuff you're right on time so 
Anyway, <laughs> let us keep going. <laughs> and we recognize all of your service, Brother Bill, and everyone, everyone. So we start our litany of sacrifice with save us, O, o Holy, Holy One, one by, by your name. name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? Yeah. We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to our creator in the presence of all of our people. Gladly, we bring our sacrifices to you. We praise your name, O Amun-Ra, for it is good. Okay. Umoja, unity. We shall strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Kuji Chagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Ujima'a, cooperative economics. Together we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia. Purpose, we shall make our collective vocation, the building and developing of our community, our community, and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kumba, creativity, we shall do as much as we can in any way that we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. And together we say Imani, Imani. faith. We, we will, will believe, believe with all our hearts in our, our God, our, our people, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. I shape. And and um, you know, all of the uh, the addresses for making donations have been listed. Brother Bill did post. If you, anybody has any other questions about where they can send money, uh, please add it to the chat because. You know, at times like these, anytime we need, we need to bring what we have. And another thing we need to not forget to bring is other people. Bring your people, invite your people, have them come visit. <laughs> yeah. They don't have to stay. stay. Just, just come, come say hi. Yeah. We are not gonna bite them. <laughs> if we bite them, it's not gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we are here to grow this community. Yes. Uh, each one bring one. Mm -hmm. So at this time, as we just end in prayer, we're thankful for everyone that's here. We're thankful, Amin Ra. We're thankful, thankful for all of these warrior women and men who come, all of the new people. We are thankful for the blessing that uh, this pandemic has brought to our Oakland and Sacramento Wose communities. Because we have grown and we must continue to grow, but Thank you, Amun Ra, for what we have achieved. I'm learning myself to just be thankful what I have and yeah. stop asking for more. Just be thankful and appreciate what we have. But we have a lot of work to do. You know, we have a lot of work to do. So we need people to come, bring their time, their talents. And we're so thankful for everyone who was able to contribute today and bring, continue to do the work. We have a lot to work to do. We have a lot of challenges. And it's nothing that our ancestors don't know about. Uh, and haven't dealt with. So bring that ancestor energy and let's keep on growing. Amen, Ashe. Amen, Ashe, Amen, Ashe. What did I tell you? Black love, two people, <laughs> one voice in harmony for our uh, litany of sacrifice. It don't get any better than that, we'll say. Uh, I would be remiss when I was acknowledging the ministers. There's one minister that I forgot to acknowledge <clears throat> excuse me, a minister, I was in his circle group when we had uh, circle groups back then, we'll say Oakland, and that's Minister Lenzel. I'm not, I don't see him on my screen, but I just wanted to acknowledge that minister as well. Uh, minister Lenzel, I, I see his name on there. It's always good to know that you're in our presence, brother. Thank you so much for, for joining us this morning. And brother uh, uh, Aleman, I, I love saying his name, always greeted me with love and, and, a, and a strong uh, grip on my hands. Always glad to know that you're with us. Mama Rose, I see Brother Ed, miss you brother, ain't seen you in a long time. 
Uh, <laughs> I know once you get started with names, you know you're gonna get in trouble. Queen Mother Thurston, uh, Queen Debbie there. Um, let's give them some shout outs, y'all. I don't see my sisters, uh, uh, Mama Conke. Uh, there's, there's, oh, I see our queen, Mama Thadaway is here. I hope the family is well. Uh, Baba Kofi, see, I don't want to get whooped by one of the elders. You got to admit, you, you see that brother? Acknowledge him. You, you will be in trouble. Uh, Katabazi, once, once again, always good to see you, brother. Now, we'll say, Brother Shango, love you, man. Good to see you here as well. Um, brother Bandelli, beautiful as always. Okay, all right. If I missed you, Charge it to my head, not my heart. We'll get back to you. Now, we'll say, get ready. Now, I know you're not in a car, some of you, but if you are in a car, or even if you're not in a car, you might want to strap that seat belt on for our guest speaker. I'm telling you, this sister here, Mama Nokichi, she is a queen of many, many gifts and talents. <clears throat> Excuse me a historian, an author, an attorney, an activist with emphasis on act, active or activity, uh, a revolutionary in every which way, but loose revolutionary in thought and action. She speaks truth to power, so-called power. She says what she means and she means what she says. And uh, the title of her book says it all. And I know most of the will say community is supporting our sister by supporting her by purchasing that book. And the title of her, her book, Black Power, Black Lawyer, My Audacious. Now, you know, when a sister uses audacious, brother, that's powerful. It's powerful. Quest for Justice. Um, now, I, I must, uh, I know this, this service is, is rated PG. And that is uh, people of God. But uh, maybe off, offline, I do want to ask our sister, uh, I read a quote on her book description about sausage making and the pivotal role of strange bedfellows. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that offline. I just wanted her to kind of, you know, tell me what, what, what's that all about. Well, I, without any further ado, because you didn't come here to listen to me, I present to you our queen warrior sister, Mama Nokichi, let us receive her, we'll say. Come forth, sister, come forth. Thank you so very much, Baba Malik. Oh, yes, thank you so very much. Thank you, Rose. You all know I'm always glad to be here, Rose. I want to also thank all of my friends, uh, my colleagues that joined us. Um, there are quite a number of them on the line, so I'm not going to mention my any names, but Mama uh, Rona, Rona, I want to really thank you for that uh, poem. And Baba Jeff, that historical tribute, I have not seen one as comprehensive on Cali House. So thank you, Madasi, so very much for that. Baba Sydney, Mama Connie, Alicia, and of course, our Chief Priest Minister, uh, M. Hotep. Again, I thank you. So I would like to go on and start. And I want to uh, dedicate today's presentation to section two of the book of Patahotep, Lucia, page 41, Ma'at, Ma'at, the way of truth, justice, and righteousness is great. Its value is lasting, and it has remained unparalleled and unchanged since the time of its creator. It lies as a plain path before even the ignorant and those who violate its laws are punished. Although the wickedness may gain wealth, wrongdoing has never bought its wares to a safe port. In the end, it is my art, the way of truth, justice, and righteousness that endures and that enables the upright to say it is the legacy of my father, it is the legacy of my mother. So let us begin. The human cargo was loaded on ships at a bustling wharf in the nation's capital, right here in DC, destined for the plantations of the deep south. 
some of the enslaved pleaded for rosaries as they were rounded up praying for deliverance. But on this day, in the fall of 1838, no one was spared, not the two month old baby and her mother, not the field hands, not the shoemaker and not Cornelius Hawkins, who was about 13 years old when he was forced on board. The enslaved were grandmothers and grandfathers, carpenters and blacksmiths, pregnant women and anxious fathers, children and infants who were fearful, bewildered, and despairing as they saw their families and their communities ripped apart by the sale of 1838. Some children were sold without their parents and the enslaved were dragged off by force to the ships. Others ran away, ashe, 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 oh, before they could be captured. Their panic and desperation will be mostly forgotten for more than a century, but this was no ordinary sale of enslaved people. The enslaved human beings that belonged to the nation's most prominent Jesuit priest, and they were sold along with scores of others to help secure the future of the premier Catholic institution of higher learning at the time known today as Georgetown University. So <laughs> what happened to these 272 men, women, and children who were literally sold down the river? And what, Rose, what, if anything, is owed to the descendants of these enslaved and the descendants of the millions of others whose names and circumstances we will never know, who were sold or insured or raped or castrated or lynched or subjected to gynecological experiments devoid of anesthesia, convict leasing, forced sterilization, syphilis, redlining, mass incarceration. What is owed, if anything, to the descendants of the enslaved whose kidnappings and tortured, uncompensated labor helped to ensure the survival of colleges and universities and banks and corporations and industries and religious institutions and private estates and yes, local, state and federal government. Thank you, we'll say, for allowing me to share as part of my earlier opening fra framing an excerpt from Professor Rachel Swarn's article published in the New York Times on April 16th, 2016, shillingly describing the sale of those 272 enslaved persons to ensure the future of Georgetown University. But unlike the Georgetown revelations where there was a ship's manifest with names, there is rarely evidence of identifiable descendants from the enslavement era from which to highlight not only the atrocities of the era, but its continuing vestiges and seek acknowledgement and remedy. Indeed, the issue of reparations for African descended people in the United States was once in the not too distant past, was once unthinkable, unthinkable by mainstream America as viable public policy. Much of the information about the enslavement era and the role of comparable parties in general has been buried for a very long time, just as the bombing of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was buried, just as the massacres in Rosewood, Florida, Elaine, Arkansas, Wilmington, North Carolina, and countless, countless, countless others yet to be uncovered were buried. But y'all, our history must not be buried. It must not be swept under the rug. Damn to those who say, we're not gonna be teaching Black history in the schools, critical race theory. We need to be doing this ourselves and we will and are doing this, but damn to those who are passing laws prohibiting the audacity. Our history must not be buried, must not be swept on the run, but you know, let's not get it twisted. It was not just the South that bore culpability and we, the descendant victims, must not be the only ones to uncover and unpack it. We must not be the only ones to teach our history, to open up that casket. Indeed, my white colleague, Katrina Brown, 
uncovered evidence that her New England ancestors were the largest slave trading family in US history. She documented her roots that they brought over 10,000 Africans to the Americas in chains. She documented these roots in the Sundance acclaimed film, Traces of the Trade, a story from the deep north, not the deep south, from the deep north. She stressed that the slave trade was not just a few people taking a boat and sending it out. Everybody in the town lived off of slavery. She said the boat maker, the iron worker who made the shackles, the coopers who made the barrels to hold the rum, the distillers who took the molasses and the sugar and made it into the rum. Literally the whole town was dependent upon the slave trade. Wealth, wealth and poverty in the United States, she says, has been amassed in large measure as a direct or indirect consequence of the institution of slavery. So a conversation with Rose about reparations as a member of Rosé, let me just get just a bit personal. I've been organizing uh, around the issue of reparations for African descendants since 1975 when teenager y'all, during a time when the topic was not popular, uh, when it was definitely on the fringes, when it was not fashionable to address the issue, when one would be branded as a militant or a revolutionary, both of which I was, or just plain crazy, which I was not, or in today's parlance, uh, 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 what do they call it, Black identity extremists. So it gives me great pleasure today to be in the company of some of the leading minds in the country, promoting the right to and the need for repertory justice. And even several years ago, in the company of 2020 presidential candidates vying for the Democratic nomination, who were just beginning to even feel just a teeny went bit comfortable, just even uttering the word reparations. But Black folk, we've been demanding reparations from the beginning. Two of the first formal records for petitions for reparations that were pursued and won came from formerly enslaved Black women, Henrietta Woods and uh, Belinda Royal, and then there was the pension movement that Brother Jeff so eloquently uh, showed us uh, about during the historical tribute, seeking compensation for enslavement from federal agencies led by Kelly House and uh, Isaiah Dickinson in 1898 uh, the, 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 at the largest mass-based movement for reparations at, at its height had over 600,000 dues paying members. Then there was the repatriation movement of Marcus Garvey in the 1920s. There was Queen Mother Otley Moore, the Nation of Islam, the Black Panther Party, President Imari Obadeli in the Republic of New Africa, James Foreman, the African People's Socialist Party, the National Black United Front, the National Black Political Assembly, Dorothy Lewis's Black Reparations Commission, the December 1st movement. In fact, just about every Black nationalist movement during the 60s and 70s had the issue of reparations as part of their platform in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Yup, even Dr. Martin Luther King embraced the concept. Might not use term, but he embraced and talked about the concept as well. But it was the end of the 20th century that brought about what I've called the modern era reparations movement with the 1987 founding of INCOVA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. And I'm proud to have been a founding member of uh, INCOVA. And then in 2015, NARC, the National African American Reparations uh, Commission. But when INCOVA was formed, the Congress, as what was talking about, was just in the process of voting to approve and provide reparations to Japanese Americans for their unjust internment during World War uh, too. And we had in COVID, we looked around and said, hmm, a congressionally mandated commission to study the issue of reparations for the Japanese Americans, uh, leading to the submission of proposals, which led to a bill signed by the president. We said, that sounds like a precedent, okay? So using the commission model, which led to the Japanese American um, uh, Civil Liberties Act of 1988, it was an inspirational strategy. And the Encoba Coalition collaborated with Congressman John Conyers and getting HR 40 drafted and introduced a commission to examine the institution of slavery and subsequent racial and economic discrimination against African Americans and the impact of these forces on Black people today. This commission will be charged similar to the recent legislative success of the Japanese Americans with making recommendations to Congress on appropriate remedies for uh, Black folk. 
And the bill's number 40 was in remembrance of the unfulfilled 19th century campaign promise to give free persons 40 acres and a mule. The Japanese American reparations bill talked about $20,000 to each Japanese American detention camp survivor, a trust fund to be used to educate Americans about their suffering, a formal apology from the United States government, and a pardon for all of those who resisted detention camp internment. We never even had that apology. And we talk about a pardon for those who resisted. Well, let's look at our political prisoners who are languishing in prison who resisted the war in court telpro that have been waged against our people to, 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 to destroy and disrupt the Black nationalist movement and people who sought to resist that, to fight back, languishing in prison or forced into exile. Well, there is a model, a pardon. And then I heard somewhere during service today about the amnesty, uh, the pardon that was given to the, uh, 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 the, the, the former white enslavers, the former terrorists, the pardon, the amnesty that was given to them when our freedom was finally recognized with the 13th Amendment, the nerve, the audacity. I digress for a moment, pardon me. <laughs> but we reparations um, advocates, we also challenge corporations who benefited from the profits made from the trafficking in human beings. Countless companies and industries were enriched as a result of the enslavement era. The companies that sold life insurance policies on the lives of enslaved persons, such as Aetna, New York Life, and AIG. And, and we talk about life insurance policies. Oh my God, just reminds me, I'm going off script, but we're it just reminds me of Tulsa and everything we've heard about Tulsa. We've heard more about Tulsa in the past month than we've heard in the past country years since um, Tulsa uh, uh, occurred. But we're talking about Black folk who had amassed, quote unquote, well, had mortgages, okay? Had mortgages. And because of the lies and the distortions, they said that what happened, that massacre, they called it a riot. And as such, they said, well, we can't, uh, 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 satisfy the claims on these uh, mortgages, the insurances on these mortgages because it was a riot and a riot is not covered. The nerve, again, the audacity. Gil Scott Heron said, who gonna pay reparations on my soul? So companies that sold these life insurance policies on the lives of enslaved persons, uh, there were gains made by financial giants, JP Morgan Chase, Manhattan Bank, Fleet, Boston Financial Group, Bank of America. Others with documented ties to enslavement included railroads, Norfolk Southern, CSX, Union Pacific, Canadian National, newspaper publishers that assisted the capture of runaway slaves, including Knight Rider, Tribune, EW Scripps, Gannett. I mean, you know, everything, everybody was involved with this whole enslavement. I mean, we've seen the pictures of the runaway enslaved person with the knapsack on his, all those, those were ads, okay? All of these were culpable parties, the financial backers of many of the country's top universities, including just about every single Ivy League university were wealthy slave owners. I remember some um, no newspaper articles talking about some, some of the college in 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 Virginia or somewhere down south, and they and and they they you know they weren't saying you can't do slavery. They were just saying you can't bring your individual personal slave with you to the university because you know those who didn't have slaves wouldn't be as you know prominent as those who did. You just can't bring your personal slave. They got to stay outside of the university. I mean, can't, they ain't had no problem with slavery. You know what I'm saying? So I submit that in the context of Black people in the United States, the quest for reparations essentially constitutes four elements. Number one, the formal acknowledgement of historical wrong and an official unfettered apology for the dehumanization and atrocities of the enslavement era and beyond. Now, why do I say unfettered? Because the Senate and the House of Representatives did pass symbolic resolutions apologizing for slavery and segregation. But guess what? The 2009 bill passed by the Senate had the nerve to contain a disclaimer that those seeking reparations or cash compensation could not use the apology to support a legal claim against the United States. 
unfettered apology, okay? The quest reparations also includes number two, the recognition that the injury has continued throughout the years and still manifests today. Don't get caught up in the trick bad. Well, this was way back in the slavery times and slavery has been gone for whoever knows how many years. Oh, no, 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 no. The injury continues and still manifests today. Number three, the commitment to redress by the federal government, which sanctioned the enslavement and subsequent segregation and by state and local governments and other culpable entities and private institutions, which enjoyed unjust enrichment from the air. And number four, the actual compensation in whatever form or forms are agreed upon. And I say are agreed upon because it's not for the culpable party. It's not for the perpetrator the colonizer to say what the reparation, what the remedy would or should be is for the injured parties themselves, the victims to determine just what that remedy is or should be. Look, I was part of the legal defense for um, a, a group of families that were part of the GU 272, the Georgetown, you know, um, uh, folk and, you know, uh, you know, Georgetown was talking about, okay, we're going to rename this building and we're going to, they, they weren't even talking about scholarship. They, they were saying we will, um, um, what, what is that called? Preferential admission, uh, uh, legacy. We will let you come in as a legacy uh, a, a admission or whatever. They didn't even ask the people. When we talked to some of the family members, I mean, I think this was quite minor. But what some of them were saying is they just wanted the upkeep of their ancestors' graves. I mean, they asked the people what they want. I mean, you know, that at least should have been part of the mix. They did the, the graves, tangled weeds, and all they wanted the upkeep. So, you know, ask the people, you know, what they want as part of a reparations uh, settlement. So, moreover, the U.S. must adhere to the five internationally accepted norms for reparations, inclusive of the requirements of one cessation and non repetition guarantees of non-repetition, meaning stop the harm, stop it, and don't repeat it. <laughs> number two, restitution. Number three, compensation. Number four, satisfaction. And number five, rehabilitation. Well, Zay, the spirit of reparations is sweeping the country. The United States Conference of Mayors has endorsed reparations, along with Amalgamated Bank, the Players Coalition of Professional Athletes, Coaches, and Owners across leagues, even Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, y'all. <laughs> the state of California has established a reparations commission pattern off of uh, HR uh, 40. The state of New York just this week passed a reparations uh, commission uh, 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 in its assembly. The state of California, a commission pattern off HR 40, the state of New York just passed in its assembly a reparations commission, thanks to the persistence of Black nationalist, Pan-Africanist assemblyman Charles uh, Barron. The next step is the New York uh, uh, Senate. I work closely with Alderman uh, Robin Ruth Simmons of the city of Evanston, Illinois, uh, which earmarked monies from its legal cannabis industry, and that was creative, to fund reparations initiatives. The city of Chicago passed the reparations ordinance for victims of police torture and jurisdictions across the country are passing laws to examine the history of enslavement and the vestiges that is going on even today in their own backyards. The cities of Asheville, North Carolina, Providence, Rhode Island, Amherst, uh, uh, Massachusetts, Seattle, Washington, St. Louis, Missouri, Burlington, Vermont, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, Chicago, Illinois, and more other places there in California, in addition to the state of California, have all passed bills instituting reparations task forces to look inside their own backyards again, opening up their own caskets to their direct and indirect complicities. Slavery disclosure ordinances have been enacted in 16 jurisdictions revealing historical ties to the enslavement era from financial institutions. Meanwhile, we have the Virginia and the Princeton theological seminaries making their mark dioceses of the Episcopal church and several jurisdictions have committed monies as a moral 
statement of the church's historic complicity, the Union of Reformed Judaism has passed reparations resolutions, as has the National Council of Churches, the United Methodist Church, the United Church of Christ, and countless, countless other uh, denominations. Georgetown University and the Jesuits pledged $100 million uh, for that stuff that I began my presentation with, GU272. 20 states, including the District of Columbia, have passed or are considering resolutions to declare racism a public health crisis. None of this city and state action, however, none of it must let the federal government off the hook for its roles. HR 40 now has more co-sponsors than ever in its 32 year history, nearly 130, excuse me, excuse me, nearly 190 in the House of Representatives, 22 in the Senate, Prior to Congressman Conyers' retirement, the bill, H.R. 40, was changed from a study bill to a remedy bill to not only study the issue, but also develop reparation proposals for consideration. Yes, the federal government is not to be let off the hook. Why? <laughs> because we must remember, and we must never, ever forget the origins of the Black nation in the United States. We are the descendants of Africans kidnapped and transported to the United States with the explicit complicity of the US government and every single arm of the US lawmaking and law enforcing machinery, US federal law, state law, high court decisions, lower court decisions, the dehumanization, the atrocities, the terrorism of our enslavement in the United States. They were not isolated incidences. They were a matter of war, war. War conducted under the specific authority of the United States Constitution. The kidnapping was a wrongful act for which our ancestors and we as their heirs are entitled to damages. The enslavement was a wrongful act for which we, our ancestors and we as their heirs are entitled to damages. The stealing of our labor was a wrongful act as is the genocide. We are still suffering. We are entitled to damages, to reparations. The compensations we speak of are owed to us. Genocide, not just for the Jews or for the native peoples in this country. We need not be timid about uplifting that term when it comes to our people, not just in rhetoric, but in reality. Genocide, we need to really look at that definition. We need to look at it. We need to study. We're talking about the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group as such, number one, killing members of a group. Number two, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of a group. Number three, deliberately inflicting upon the group conditions of life calculated to bring about their destruction in whole or in part. Number four, uh, taking measures to prevent births within the group. Number five, transferring children from one group to another. That's the definition of genocide internationally, which has been codified in the U.S. code under U.S. law. But genocide also is not the only actionable act. Conspiracy to commit genocide. Directing public incitement to commit genocide. Attempt to commit genocide and complicity in its commission. And the definition goes on to say that uh, uh, those guilty of genocide shall be punished, shall be, regardless of whether they are constitutionally protected rulers, public officials, or private citizens. We need to read this. We need to study it. I have a white paper, where we call it, we're, we're black and green paper, that, you know, that outlines all of this. But back to the script, I'm sorry. Yes, the federal government, U.S. Constitutional Article 1, Clause 1, Section 9, expressly guaranteed and sanctioned the importation of kidnapped African prisoners of war. See, narrative, language, we were kidnapped African prisoners of war. The U.S. Constitution sanctioned that to every state that might desire us until the year 1808. 
The article also upheld the further dehumanization of African by relegating our status to that of three-fifths of a white man. And most egregious, it was war conducted against the African on this soil under the authority of yet another U.S. constitutional provision, Article 4, Section 2, Clause 3, also known as the Future of Slave Provision. This article mandated that no enslaved person, even if he or she had reached a free state, none of us were saved. And it was the constitutional duty, the legal obligation of every single white man, woman, or child to deliver us up to the U.S. government to track us down. The 13th Amendment passed in 1865, recognized the freedom of all enslaved Africans, made it illegal to continue slavery except for that ridiculous acceptance punishment for crime clause in 13th Amendment. That's another presentation for another day. But no payment, however, was made for stolen labor land, cultural bait, excuse me, and physical bait, <laughs> uh, economic exploitation. A little known fact, however, is that payment was in fact made, <laughs> not to the newly freed, not to us, not to our ancestors, but payment was made to the former slave owners for the loss of this so-called property. Moreover, the Dred Scott case had been decided scarcely eight years prior in which a Supreme Court justice ruled that a black person in America had no rights which a white person was bound to respect and that neither Dred Scott nor any black person could be a citizen of the United States in the manner in which that word was used in the constitution. You see, when they wrote the preamble, we the people, they were talking about we the white people. Although the 13th amendment set no restrictions on the freedom of formerly enslaved people, the 14th Amendment passed two and a half years later, robbed them of some of their hard won freedom. You see, the 14th Amendment imposed the obligations of US citizenship upon the African in America without his or her informed consent or the benefits of that citizenship and without any meaningful discussion of political alternatives inherent in the international right to self-determination. <laughs> the audacity. How are you going to take a free people and tell them that they've got to become part of your family, especially since you had castrated his father, raped his mother, sold the children to your relatives, didn't ask him if he wanted to join your family, didn't ask him if he wanted to start his own family if the African were free. And there's been no debate as to the authenticity of the freedom part of the 13th Amendment. No one not even the ex-slaveholder could define the African's future status for him, impose a status upon him. This was the newly free persons, the Africans alone. It was the fruit of the right to self-determination. So thus was that. That's why it's pertinent to understand. I went through all this because some people think that reparations is solely an economic concept. It is not. It is a political concept as well, and a cultural one. Reparations are not limited to stolen labor, but also for their unjust war and cultural aggression as well. The political essence of slavery is not merely found in the economic exploitation of our labor, but also in the illegal imposition of US jurisdiction on the enslaved and her descendants, it can never be overemphasized that Black people are on this soil as a result of warfare supported by the United States and other nations and are here as a result of vicious colonization, cultural and physical rape and economic exploitation under chattel and mental bondage and terror. And the full ramifications of this historical record must not be endlessly ignored. When our freedom fighters are resisting, they are resisting that war that has been waged again. We need to look at it in that context as well. This is why the claim from the federal government is so important. Every time we ran away, it didn't matter if we just walked away quietly in the night, Harriet Tubman. It didn't matter if we organized elaborate insurrections, Demar Beasy. It didn't matter if we fled to 
Pennsylvania or New York, they were going to come after us with their armed forces and their paddy bowlers and their militia and their dogs. So they chased us and they pursued us and they tracked us down and they beat us, castrated us, lynched us and sought to quell all forms of our resistance. And so my brothers and sisters, when we see that video of the ruthless pursuit, chasing and blatant gunning down of Walter Scott in South Carolina, Ahmaud Aubrey and Georgia like runaway slaves, when we see the gunning down of Michael Brown and Ferguson like a dog in the street. When we see Eric Garner and George Floyd being choked to death and the countless, 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 countless others, all by those who have been sworn to uphold the law, we know that there is a connection between the US criminal punishment system and the necessity for reparatory justice. There is a connection between the disparities in the healthcare system and the necessity for reparatory justice. There is a connection between the lack of economic opportunity and the necessity for reparatory justice. There is a connection between post-traumatic slavery syndrome and post-incarceration stress syndrome and the necessity for reparatory justice. There is a connection and each and every harm must be compensated. And it is past time that the role of the federal government government be emphasized. I recently spoke on the issue of reparations before the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, <laughs> the Jews, which had recently issued a resolution in support of HR 40. I told them that there was one thing that I learned from the Jewish experience. I said, no. <clears throat> It wasn't the 70 million, excuse me, my bad. It wasn't the $70 billion in reparations the German government paid to more than 800,000 Holocaust survivors or the 7 billion Germany agreed to get to the state of Israel. No, nope. it was the concept of transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. It was the study that was done of second and third generation Holocaust survivors where each searches found that they had inherited genes that had transformed as a result of their ancestors' trauma and were becoming more susceptible to anxiety and all these other disorders and health issues. It was found that the trauma from the Holocaust traveled in their genes, transmitted intergenerationally. And I listened to Joy DeGruy, and I listened to Nana, uh, Nana uh, Pat uh, Newton and Marimba Ani, and I began to think of, you know, Black folk, <laughs> we have inherited centuries of trauma as a result of not only the enslavement era, but also everything else. If the Jewish Holocaust caused immense emotional, physical, and psychological effects intense enough to cause trauma to survivors, then what impact on living Black people today due to the abject horrors and brutality and trauma and terrorism of the enslavement itself, the kidnappings, the forced free labor, the stealing of our languages and culture, the rapes, the breedings, the dismemberments, the brutality and inhumanity of the Black codes, the convict, least labor, the peonage system, the chain gangs, sharecropping, lynchings, harms of Jim Crow apartheid the denial of the benefits of the Homestead Act, the GI Bill, gerrymandering, redlining, educational inequities, health disparities, mass incarceration, and more. And all this for 400 years, all of this still existent within the collective genes of Black people in this country? <laughs> Pay me! Mama Rana said, pay me. Add it up, Minister Farrakhan said, who gonna pay reparations on my soul? And then the whites have the nerve to ask a question. I am innocent. Mm -hmm. I should not be held liable for things that happened a hundred years ago. That was my great, great grandfather. In fact, I'm a liberal. I voted for Obama. Well, we all stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Although the present generation of whites may be innocent of what their forefathers and their foremothers, let's not forget about that, okay, did. As a people, they're in a privileged position because of the actions of their predecessors. Each generation passes its debts 
as well as his assets onto the next generation. The heritage which whites enjoy in this country is what has been called white skin privilege. They benefit from a society, a state, an economic structure, which is governed by white supremacy. And although we may debate methods of operationalizing this data for measurement, there is no question that whites in this country enjoy the fruits of 400 years of unjust enrichment as a result of the stolen labor of African people. Another question. Well, slavery ended over a century ago. Why should the government pay reparations now? Well, y'all, the answer is succinct. It should be paid because it is old. Had it been paid before, there would be no past due debt. There is no statute of limitations on redressing human rights violations. And you know what, guess what, y'all? Debts are neither absolved nor diminished by the passage of time. Y'all know when you don't pay that bill, <laughs> over time, debts grow larger with interest, okay? <laughs> What about Africans in the diaspora? Well, the reparations movement is an international movement. The descendants of Africans in Canada, Barbados, Haiti, Jamaica, Brazil, et cetera, et cetera, are all due reparations from their particular European colonizer. Colonized African countries also do reparations as are subjugated African descendants in Europe. All of these efforts deserve the solidarity and the moral support of justice lovers everywhere. So now the jackpot question, the doozy elephant in the room, is reparations just about the money? No, I submit reparations is not just about the money. It's not even mostly about the money. In fact, money may not be even 1% of what reparatory justice is all about. Reparations is mostly about making repairs, mental repairs psychological repairs, cultural repairs, organizational repairs, societal repairs, institutional repairs, technological repairs, economic repairs, political repairs, educational repairs, justice system repairs, health repairs, the list can go on and on. Indeed, a reparation settlement can come in as many forms as necessary to equitably address the many forms of injury sustained from chattel slavery and its continued vestiges. The harms were multifaceted, thus the remedies must be as well. The material forms reparations can take, I mean, you know, yes, absolutely, completely, indeed include cash payments, but also land, economic development, repatriation resources, other forms of reparations could include funds for scholarships, community development, creation of multimedia depictions of the history of African-Americans, textbooks for educational uh, institutions that tell history from the African descendants perspective, development of historical uh, monuments and museums, return of artifacts and art to appropriate people or institutions, exoneration of political prisons, elimination of unjust laws and, and, and practices. Look, y'all, off script just for a second. I was on my morning walk yesterday. I, I live in a in DC in the Chevy Chase community. It's a predominantly white um, community. And I'm just walking along. I see this whole horde of white folks, a couple of sprinkling black, black folks in the park, Lafayette Park. And I said, what's going on here? And I'm reading the thing. It comes that in my neighborhood, all of that land, the school that had been built, the park, the recreation center was land that was stolen from black folk. And I didn't even know. Stolen from black folk back in the 1920s, a black family, the Pointer uh, family, the, 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 the patriarch had, was one of those who helped to create the CNO you know, can, canal. The city took over all of that land, over 80 acres under the concept of eminent domain, built the school, built the park, just stole their land. And I didn't even know nothing about it. And I'm a native Washingtonian, consider myself quite astute and an educated person and a, a, a historian and, and all that. And I'm thinking, with the reparations, okay. Okay, so what they did was they um, said, we're gonna rename the park Lafayette slash Pointer Park. Again, I'm saying, where the reparations? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I, I mean, it was a nice gesture. All the city council people were there and I went, took out my cell phone and did a Facebook live video on it. But I was just dumbfounded 
because I knew nothing of this. Our history has been buried, has been swept under the rug. And we're not even part of the part of determining what's due. So I need to be coming down to the close. Finally, <laughs> shall Oprah, y'all gonna disagree with me here. Shall Oprah and other wealthy black people benefit from reparations? The answer, in my humble opinion, short, sweet, and simple. Yes! Every Black person of African descent in this country is entitled to a reparation settlement. And they, like everyone else, can do with it what they want. But it's entitled to them. It's due. It's owed. Come on. I don't know why this is so difficult for reparations is damages for injury. And I can assure you that anyone, regardless of whether they are wealthy or poor, anyone who steps out on the street through no fault of their own and gets hit by a car, this going to be a financial settlement with damages assessed. And Lord have mercy, if it was intentional, then there will be criminal penalties as well. Y'all, we talk about reparations, we should be talking about the, that criminal penalties that's part of the Genocide Convention. So in conclusion, the role that government, corporations, industries, religious institutions, educational institutions, private estates and other entities played and the role that they are still playing in supporting the institution of slavery and its vestiges. All of these are roles that must not be ignored or swept under the rug. They must be recognized. They must be acknowledged. They must be discussed and they must be redressed with respect before we can really be about any business of racial healing, any business of atoning, and any business of closing that shameful era of history. And I will end as I began with the Husea, the book of Patah Hotep, section two, page 41. It's all about ma'at, the way of truth, justice, and righteousness that endures and enables one to say, it is the legacy of my father and mother. Reparations, reparatory justice is the legacy of my father and mother. It is the legacy of our ancestors. It is the legacy of our people. Reparations now, reparations in our lifetime. I see. I see. Thank you, Sister Kishi. Thank you. Yeah. 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 She made the case. She needs to be in front of Congress or somebody making that same summation for reparations. Case closed. Guilty as charged on all charges. I say, I say, I say. I got to calm down for a second right here. Ah, oh, that was beautiful. Uh, that was yeah, beautiful. beautiful presentation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just wondering where we go with this now. Can we form like a study group or some special group within WOSE to look at reparations and to submit, you know, information? Yeah, so actually um, the state of California is beyond everywhere else right now. They've just set, set up a commission. And since most yeah. of WOSE is based in, in California, you should um, follow that. And, and yes, I'm happy to work with whoever wants to do anything with respect to what say on this or present information uh, to the commission that's looking at it, looking at what's in California's own backyard. What and, about and, petitions? Do we have petitions for each and every one uh, of us to voice our opinion and say, this is what we want and this is what we need? Are well, there one of the things that needs to happen is we need to call upon your congresspersons and your senators to support HR 40 and S40. Uh, call upon Biden to um, bring those um, uh, those resolutions into existence via executive order. Th those are some of the things, some of the immediate things that need, need to happen that can make a difference. Oh, oh, My thought is that we could just have a special study group within WOSE because 
when we look at ourselves, you know, we, we really base ourselves on the Husia and many other uh, traditional thoughts that we have, not the, the, the state, not the other groups, but we can then use what we have, what we think, what we feel and submit it and then encourage and support what the other groups are doing. That's what I'm suggesting, that we do something within WOSE. That sounds yeah. great. <laughs> 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 that's, that's I, I like that thought, but I also have a thought with Mama Nikishi. Can you write next steps for us to do like, like on the ground doing, like you said, you know, call someone, you know, and, and, and encourage, you know, us to get out there and do something. But I think that it would be great for us to have some next steps to where we can actually be on the ground, making this happen for ourselves and not waiting. Oh, Brian, go, go ahead, um, Mama Nikish. I was just going to say all of the above. I, I will help support whatever it is you want and whatever you need. Just call it for me. I'm a part of Wose. <laughs> you know, perhaps what we can do yeah. for the sake of time is, you know, uh, put it in the chat, the suggestions that were that were offered, uh, you know, contact maybe if, if, uh, uh, if, if, if Sister uh, Mama Nakichi doesn't, doesn't mind, maybe we can, you know, uh, put it in the chat where we can contact her via email or text or what have you. So you can formalize some of those groups and, you know, and bring it to fruition, some of the ideals and suggestions uh, that were made. Um, and so if everybody's in agreement with that, we can at least start there and see who has interest, who would like to move forward with what has been suggested. And, uh, you know, we can, we can go from there. And Malik, on an individual level, we can also uh, look into the, uh, uh, the lady and, uh, in California State that is, um, is, is heading up a commission to look at the whole uh, issue in question of, uh, of reparations. And I can't recall her name, but I know that she was appointed by, uh, by Governor Newsom. And so, you know, that is, that is her primary role. So in keeping with Sister um, Afua, uh, I mean, collectively we can compile, um, you know, ideas and concerns and, and, and direct those to that, to that lady. And, um, and, and of course, there's no reason to just singly focus on her. You can also look at other issues uh, uh, more national, but this is, you know, this is right here in our back door. This is the work that she's charged with. And so we should definitely utilize that avenue. I, believe, I just put something I in the chat. That, uh, I believe yes. that Wanda Sabir is involved with reparations here in San Francisco. And the brother that's involved with it is a Jahahara in San Francisco. And you can always find information about reparations in the uh, paper from San Francisco. I, uh, what is it? I can't even think of it now, the, but it's a black paper that comes out of San Francisco. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much for that Queen. Uh, Queen Sun Mother. Reporter? Is, is that no, the no, Sun no. Reporter? The, uh, Bayview. Bayview. The Bayview. 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 Yes. Bayview. All right. And I don't want to task Bill with another, you know, task, but he's probably doing it anyway. Uh, some of the suggestions maybe it could be compiled in the, in the chat or one one source to contact them how to move forward so that, you know, we can, we can move on with the church uh, uh, worship service, but not leave behind the important a question and suggestions that have been raised. And so uh, we can do that while moving forward with uh, uh, the, the rest of the service. And maybe Minister Makalisi and Baba Tai can, can uh, also, uh, you know, segue into that because uh, they're coming forth next with our uh, invitation um, uh, to join this movement, this mod movement. It's, as Baba Sidney always referred to his ass. So I'm going to turn it over to Minister Michaelisi, our distinguished minister, and our brother Baba Tai, uh, who along with Bill and others, you know, makes all of this possible. So uh, Minister Michaelisi and Baba one, Tai. One quick, one quick statement, please. 
Can we, yeah. um, for those that are interested in maybe doing something with Wose, can we use Nkechi's uh, um, uh, website to contact her and then we can maybe coordinate from there? Is that okay, Nkechi? Yes, actually, I put my email in the chat. I can't find it now, but I put it in the chat. Yeah, I, can... I saw it. I got oh, it. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, you can contact me directly or my my, my website, um, blackpowerblacklawyer.org. Um, there's a form you can contact me through there. People are asking about black bookstores, um, blackpowerblacklawyer.com. I have lo uh, links to a lot of black bookstores um, on there. This African American Literature Book Club that's there, the Sankofa. The, the, I'm tr I, I, I don't remember what's in California. I think Marcus Books. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and all that. Thank okay. you. Thank uh, you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Brother Malik. Let me come in and. I see you. Yeah, let me come in and be, before before I do what I'm here to do, um, and before I turn it over to Minister Makalisi, let me say uh, to Mama Nikishi that um, I've known Mama Nikishi my whole adult life. It seems I have been in the trenches with her. We work, <laughs> you know, we've been to Mississippi, we've been to Detroit, we've been all over the country together. I know that she is a tireless uh, worker for the rights of political prisoners and for this rep and for reparations for black people in general. Um, and so, you know, she has put out a call. It's not for her to come to, to California and lead us in the reparation struggle. It's for us to take up the call and, and do the work ourselves. And I know, I know nobody's suggesting that Nikishi come out here and do that, but, if, but it's, up, it's up to us to do our work for reparations. Okay, now the reason that I I'm agree, here- brother. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Now, the reason that I'm here is that last week uh, we heard from Brother Paris King, who said he was interested in being a member of OSE. I met with Brother Paris uh, during the week, uh, and he is, in fact, ready to become a member. And if there are no objections, and seeing none, let me introduce the newest associate member of the OSE community, Brother Paris King. Would you like to come and say something, my brother? Good morning. Um, thank you for the invitation, Jose. Thank you, Sister Nakechi, for your words. And thank you to all the ministers who have spoken today and who have spoken in the last weeks as well. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the community. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. So, thank you. Welcome indeed, Brother all right. Paris. All right, Brother Paris. Welcome, Brother Paris. Thank you. Welcome, Brother Paris. Thank you. Welcome. And I have a question. I would like to know how he found out about the uh, Wose community and what is it that attracts him to our philosophy? Um, it's a good question. Am I still unmuted? Yeah. Um, well, I was mentioning to Brother Ty, I've been familiar with the Wose community since at least as far back as uh, I would say about 1994 or so, when I was uh, about 20 and, um, or I was 21, so maybe 1995. And um, I, had been, I had been in a car accident. I was hit by a truck on my bicycle. And uh, that's how I got these scars on my face. Anyway, um, and I was playing in Ed Kelly's jazz class at Laney. And I don't know if you all remember Ed Kelly. He was Kelly, like, yeah. Yeah. He was a big, uh, he's a big name out here. Anyway, E.W. Wainwright came through the class. The class. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I started playing with him and mm. he invited me over. And, and, um, and I thought, I mentioned to Brother Ty, I thought that that might have been the connection, but I think it was actually Favia who was hanging around at the same time. And uh, just over the years, you know, I've always, uh, well, not really so much anymore, but as a youngster, I was playing drums and playing Haitian music and West African music. And so members of the community, um, as well as the philosophy not connected to members of the community has just always been around me. But what connected me personally was about four years or so ago, um, a friend of mine from high school, Ajay, uh, invited me to come play at a service. And, um, and it was Minister Hodge 
And so I was at Wose uh, in East Oakland. And, um, you know, at the time I was, uh, I was playing music in a church. And when we started reading um, from the Husea, and I saw how it was all, you know, all the stuff that the church was, was preaching was in its rawest, unfiltered and correct presentation. Um, and it, it just stuck with me. And then over time, and I expressed last week that over time, that, that uh, those relationships I had were a cause of great um, anxiety and turmoil for me um, as my attempts to um, become involved with reading the scripture led me to results and historical uh, understandings that were at odds and were um, anyway. So through the pandemic, when everything changed uh, just about six months ago, five months ago, something like this, um, I just remembered what was a, it just, just out of nowhere, no direct connection. It just came into my head and I reached out to the info and slowly have been, um, you know, I got the, the, the invitation to join Zoom and I was dropping in every couple of weeks and like mm -hmm. this. Well, welcome, welcome. Thanks. <laughs> it's a long-winded story, but yeah. I see, I see. Welcome, welcome. We're Thank so happy to have you with us, Brother Paris, and uh, we look forward to your your contribution as well as contributions we uh, intend to continue making to you, to your life, your spirit. But uh, together, we 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 have work to do. Together, we have uh, successes to achieve. And we want to extend right now the invitation. If there's anyone here listening, this is your first time or maybe not your first time, but a time when, when you've been impacted by the presentations today uh, from the beginning to, to the end. Uh, and especially with, with what Sister Nkichi was, was, was sharing with us, presenting with us. But I'd like to say, you know, most is a community that's, that's been, you know, it, 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 that, that, that came to life dealing it, it, it with, with the, the spiritual, the religious aspect of, 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 of what's been imposed on us as a people that we, that we are waking up from, you know, what, 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 what this life is all about, what this universe is all about, what our existence is all about is not what's, 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 what's uh, in the, the Eurocentric uh, definition and control of, of, of religion. It is not there, you know, uh, Dr. Hen Dr. John Henry Clark and others said to us, you know, that, that religion is, is the deification of a culture. And so we, we're dealing with, if we're in, in USA Christianity, we're, we're dealing with uh, uh, the, 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 the deification of that culture that sought to enslave, not sought to, they did enslave us as a people and justified by, by their perceptions of, of what, what God has empowered and entitled them to do. So we, we, we've broken out of that. We've broken out of that to, to, to understand who we are as a people, what, what our contributions to humanity and civilization have been. And we're seeking to recruit as many folks as, as possible to, to, to come and be with us. And, and we can be the, the army of liberation for our people uh, all over the earth, all over the earth, all over the world. And so we invite you to come and be with us. Uh, and if, if you feel that energy, that spirit, that power today, right at this moment, just let it be known. And, and we will get in touch with you, give you information on what the process is. And, uh, and uh, you know, as, as we move forward, we'll say the, 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 the members, the current members that are here, you know, what, what's been suggested, you know, Sister Nkichi gave us a whole bunch of information to deal with. They've got a commission going on in California. We, 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 we can do more to, to, to awaken ourselves as a people uh, when it comes to this, this issue of, of, of reparations and what needs to be done, the, the money, the cultural, the educational stuff that needs to be, be challenged and changed uh, uh, and progress needs to be made on. But right now, if, if there's someone that wants to come and become a part of this spiritual community, African-centered spiritual community that, that's doing what, 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 what Jesus is, 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 is said to have said somewhere in the Bible there that, you know, these things that I have done, you can do and even more. 
And of course, uh, the scholars that, that really know what it's all about said Jesus wasn't Christian because Christianity didn't even exist when Jesus, if, if Jesus is real, when, when, when that dynamic was happening, Christianity wasn't even existing. But, but somewhere that, that saying out of supposedly Jesus' mouth is what we're all about. You can do whatever has been done and we must do more. So the, the invitation is here today. If you want to join this community and help us help you help ourselves together to do more, uh, let it be known. Let it be known. Let's give me thanks and praises for all that's been presented today from the message uh, to the beginning, to the, to the uh, libations, to the prayer circle. Amen ra hetep ashe anku jasene. If I may just briefly, if I may just briefly, I don't want to put him on the spot, but I saw that brother. So what? Hold, I just want to acknowledge him, tell him, brother, I see you, and glad you came. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to be a part of this community, and I'd like to be in alignment with the things that you were just saying about how I can contribute and how I can be contributed to. Oh, I see. Well, we, we're expecting that from you from last week. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm glad to have you here yeah. today. And, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're going to work on the process yeah. and you get more involved and more and more engaged. Uh, and uh, we, we're, we're looking forward to that. I see. I see. I see. Brother friend of mine in the chat, Brother uh, Dr. Akmal Muwakil says he, he wants to um, work in the community. I don't know if he can speak right now. I just see him. He put that in the chat. Who is that? Where is he? Akmal, can you? I see his thing says. Yeah, yes. Um, yes, I'm here. How are you? Um, blessings to everybody. Um, I'm trying to work this Zoom so you can see me. Can you uh -huh. hear me? Yes, yeah. indeed. Brother Akmal. Yes, M yes. Muwakil? Yes, sir. I see. Um, I, I have to first thank um, Sister Nikichi for um, for inviting me today, um, and with her with her power that she's had ever since I've I've known her for many years. Oh, here we go. You you kind of caught me um, working, but you know working for the people is what I do, I and so um, by being introduced to your group. Um, I would appreciate it if I could be a part of that to continue the work that I've done, to continue the work that assist the community, not basically for myself, but for our future generation. Because, you know, we stand on the backs of a lot of people that's gone before us. And so, you know, we need to be able to make it so that people that's going to walk um, after us have the pathway so that they can uh, make it in life so that they can continue to to work um, to uplift the rest of the generations. So um, I appreciate um, like all of it, the prayers, the 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 um, all that has gone on today uh, from the beginning when I when I um, started. So yeah, I would definitely like to have more information and see how I can get involved and um, learn more and as well share my knowledge. Um, from the years of the things that I do. Um, I, I see, I okay, see. So, 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 I see. So, Brother Dr. Akmal, I have your email address, uh, info at healingarts.net. Um, yes, sir. I'll contact you this week, uh, get your phone number, and we can have a conversation, and uh, we'll get you all set up, get you everything you need to know to become a member of OSE. I appreciate that. We appreciate I you. Brother. Yes, Thank indeed. you. We appreciate that. Look forward to getting that information. All right, likewise. Any, anyone else? No, but Baba Ty, yeah. also note that Dandy Way had a comment too, so just to come follow back on that. Yeah. All right, Sister Dandy Way. She's okay. She just put a comment. I believe she's familiar with the young man that was just speaking. Oh, what, a comment where in the chat box? All right. Well, if there's, there's no one else wants to join today, we'll you know, look forward to it happening next week <laughs> and the week <laughs> after that. I said. We take one when they come, we take two or three more when that happens. But 
we we got to keep pressing on to get the word out to get the spirit out. Uh, that we we need to challenge everything. I you know I, I don't I don't understand this. But what well I I understand, it, but I don't the, the words they're using this racist race racial technology teaching whatever. It just seems maybe hey we don't want folks to know about we don't want some black folks to know about their history. Let's keep, and keep them in these schools that are underfunded because uh, they live in poor communities that there's a thing in the news uh, recently where, where the sister was talking about selling her house and uh, the, 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 uh, the appraisal that she was given by the, by the real estate industry was, was far below what the house was worth. And she, she got some white friends of her to come in and, and, and work with her. And when they came and talked to the white man, I think the, 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 the appraisal would almost double. You know, so mm -hmm. we, we're in that kind of uh, society, yeah. that kind yeah. of uncivil, crooked, oh, a bunch of, all a bunch of crooks, uh, devils. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, we're looking for new members, new energy, new, new power, new force. And you know, again, we got a commission in California. Oh, get with it. Don't let them, don't let them just cruise along. Oh, hey, we got work to be done, changes to be made. All right, I'm being quiet. And this is uh, Queen Karen G. Good evening. This is Queen Karen G. And I would like to be a part of your community. Nikichi invited me in today. And I, I listened from the store to everywhere I could. So I didn't miss any of her her uh, input on it, but I would like to be a part of the community. I'm social media and communications and things like that. I tell the stories, I get the stories out. And so I'm, I'm sure that in my lane, I could be of help. I so, have a repository I in the directory that can. I do. I put it, I put it in, the, in the chat, my information. You can look me up. And I guess Nikichi, or Nkichi, as you properly say, will vouch for me. <laughs> Karen You're welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, Karen. Karen has been a stalwart um, advocate and colleague and friend of mine in Washington, D.C. We share many, many, many stories. So thank you so much for yes. coming this morning. I, every time I look in the chat, I see more people from D.C. area by the time I see hey. you left. You don't know these folks. These folks came right. after you left. You're right. <laughs> but um, and Dr. Cheryl Baptiste is on the line. I don't know I if you saw her. her. I Remember? saw her. Dr. Ben Vernal. I got all, all my doctor friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I was right. gonna say, Sergeant Brother Jihad, I mean, Sister Tandy, who was in DC, was in California now. I mean, I'm well, just Brother saying. Ty talks to Sister Karen now. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, Sister Karen, I, I got your information uh, as Minister Michaelisi was ending. I was going to come on and say to you that I got your information and I, I will be contacting you. You came on before me, but I want you to know I will be contacting mm. you this week as well. Okay, I'll put my phone number in the in the chat if you need because you know I take texts. A lot of times I'm on the phone using it because they have so many things that are convenient to use through the phone. But if you text me first and let me know, I'll see that text probably because my phone won't be ringing. So I'll put that in there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, she... I, ju I just want to quickly say, I always say. You're not a movement unless you're moving. And right now we're doing it moving, we'll say. We're moving. <laughs> Keep it going. Welcome again to all those who have who want to join uh as Baba Sydney said, I gotta keep quoting this this we'll say this my art movement. And I think uh uh Mama Nukichi may have to uh look at a we'll say site in uh, in DC. <laughs> not everything there, you know. You got to, so just, just saying, you know, that, that's beautiful. So that's what happens when you have uh, to the new members. You know, uh, today was special, but every day that we have a chance to get together on Wolf Say Zoom is special. And so uh, we we just thankful. We're thankful for everyone who here today. Everyone who had a message. You know, all the presenters. Thank you uh, so much, and thank you for allowing me to. Uh, uh, be your your humble host once again but before we close and i call on i just want to acknowledge you know you know queen mama uh and, and gina because and, and mama Kanke, because you know 
if I'm on here and they're on here and I don't acknowledge them, I failed my duties as a host. Uh, so, uh, and I know it's others too, so please forgive me, charge to my head, not my heart. Uh, without any further ado, Baba Damu, the maestro, please close us out, brother, with a beautiful song. Lift every voice. to them who was able to lift us up faultlessly before the throne on high. May they empower us to be a people with one aim. One aim. One, aim. one vision. One, one vision. One faith. One, one faith. faith. One destiny. One destiny. One, destiny. one, love. one, one love. love. One heart. One, one heart. heart. One God. One, one God. God. Let us call upon the name of that one God, as our ancestors and elders have done for countless generations, for time immemorial. Let us all say together, Amen. Amen. In tune, out of tune, you are the most beautiful, most beautiful people, people on the face of this earth. earth.